Tuesday afternoon, SpaceX will launch its most powerful rocket ever, carrying some cargo belonging to the company's founder. Elon Musk's red Tesla Roadster sports car will be loaded inside the rocket before it is launched beyond the atmosphere. Musk tweeted this animation illustrating what a successful launch would look like. If all goes as planned, Musk's car and a spacesuit clad dummy named Starman will detach from the rocket and head into deep space. That name Starman is a tribute to the late musician David Bowie. CBS News space consultant Bill Harwood interviewed Musk in anticipation of the launch. They spoke about Musk's confidence in the mission and why a $250,000 car was chosen to go on board. In theory it should work, but uh, when theory and reality collide, reality wins. Reality wins every time. Um, I love putting the Tesla on board. I mean, for a new rocket, you just put a mass it's simulator of some yeah, exactly. kind. Yeah, exactly. Like a lot of people don't understand what, why we. What, what, what's the purpose of sending a car to Mars? There's no. There's no point. <laughs> Obviously, yeah. it's just for fun. Yeah. Um, and and to get the public excited. Um, but as you were saying, it's it, normally. Uh, when a new rocket is tested, they put something really boring on, like a block of concrete or a chunk of steel or something. Mm -hmm. They're like, well, that's pretty boring. So let's, that's what's the most fun thing we could put on. Because um, this is just a test flight. We don't want to put any, any valuable satellites on board. So this, the car is just the most fun thing that we could think of. Okay, but a car's way more expensive. <laughs> Bill joins us now via Skype from Merritt Island, Florida, where the launch will take place. So many questions for you, Bill. Elon Musk has played down the expectations for this launch, saying he'll consider it a win if the vehicle makes it far enough from the pad so as not to damage it. What is it about this launch that makes it so difficult? Well, you know, the, the Falcon 9 is the rocket they normally launch at SpaceX. It's already complicated enough. It's got nine rocket motors at the base of this booster. For this heavy version, you take three of those and strap them together, so there'll be 27 engines firing when this thing takes off. The acoustics, the vibration when that's happening is extreme and very difficult to model on the Earth. And then as the vehicle climbs away through the lower atmosphere, which is pretty dense, you build up a lot of aerodynamic stress. And so modeling that, making sure the thing's gonna hold together while it accelerates uh, out of the atmosphere with those 27 uh, engines, nearly five million pounds of thrust, that's a, that's, a, that's a good little piece of engineering. So I think he's hedging his bets a little bit. Uh, it's the first time it's ever flown. I have to see what happens. I mean, he's, he's optimistic it's going to work, but you never can tell about something like this. Yeah, well, success or failure, the car and Starman are not coming back to Earth. But what about the rocket itself? Well, that's, that's also fascinating. You know, we've all gotten used to seeing SpaceX bring their first stages back to landings mm -hmm. at the Cape Canaveral Air Force Station or on an offshore drone ship for this flight because the first stage of this rocket is made up of three of those Falcons. The two outboard ships are gonna peel away. They're gonna turn around and come back to the Cape Canaveral Air Force Station, wow. while that center vehicle is gonna land on an offshore drone ship. So for those of us at the Cape watching this landing, we're gonna see two of these guys coming down side by side, under rocket power, dual sonic booms. It's gonna be something nobody's ever seen before. That's if it works. Uh, if it doesn't work, that'll yeah. be a that'll be a unique view too. Yeah, I mean, it just seems so incredibly ambitious, Bill. If the mission is successful, what would that mean for SpaceX's goal of a cargo mission to Mars by 2022? Well, they're really talking about a different rocket for Mars. They're talking about it. Uh, they call it the BFR, a uh, big freaking rocket. If you want to think about it that way, I'm sure you could think of another acronym. Uh, this is a gigantic rocket that uh, he's really looking at for future missions out to Mars. The Falcon Heavy that we're going to see hopefully uh, tomorrow take off uh, is kind of an interim step. It gives a lot of experience with a heavy lift launch vehicle. And of course, if it works, uh, I think there'll be some interest from other customers, NASA, perhaps the Defense Department, satellite owners that own big, heavy spacecraft uh, that the Falcon Heavy could get into space less expensively than perhaps other rockets. So I think he's really hoping this will work out. I think it'll drum up some business for him possibly, and it'll serve as that stepping stone to that next big rocket and, as you say, future flights with astronauts to Mars. Well, so you talked about um, Falcon Heavy being SpaceX's most powerful rocket ever. Can you give us some context here, Bill? Sure. How much force will this generate? Well, you know, I said the thrust was going to be right around 5 million pounds of liftoff thrust from those 27 engines. So for comparison, the space shuttle was more powerful. It was about 6.8 million pounds mm -hmm. of thrust. And of course, the Saturn V moon rocket, you know, the gigantic rocket NASA used to send astronauts to the moon, mm -hmm. that's the most powerful operational rocket ever at 7.5 million pounds of thrust. Wow. But 
The Falcon Heavy is going to be the most powerful rocket since the shuttle was retired, more powerful than anything else in the world, either by the Russians, the Europeans, the Chinese. This will be it for a pretty good while in terms of just sheer raw power. And the launch will be taking place on Kennedy Space Center's historic Pad 39A. What is so significant about that site? Well, you know, that's where the Apollo missions, many of them went to the moon. It's where the, the space shuttle took off on its first flight. SpaceX has a 20-year lease uh, with NASA to actually operate that launch pad. They've heavily modified it uh, to support their Falcon rockets and the heavy. And if all goes well, you know, SpaceX is hoping to start launching astronauts to and from the International Space Station uh, late this year or early next. And those flights will also go off pad 39A. So quite a lot of activity out there at KSC. Well, if they can pull this off, it certainly will be a sight to behold. Bill Harwood in Merritt Island, Florida. No Thanks so much.